called My Online, and they have a, a application called LankaLoan.com that helps individuals to uh, check the eligibility criteria. But today's session is basically on trying to understand what's out there and whether it's relevant to you and is there a way for you to access it. Um, over to you, Mahesh. Thank you very much. Um, hi, Chaminda, thank you very much. Uh, good. I'm just going to start sharing my screen. Just a few moments, I'll be able to do that. Right. Hi, guys. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, I'd just like to understand a little bit about uh, what sort of industries that we're all in. Um, could maybe you all unmute the mics for a second and just um, shout out what industries? Hi, Mahesh Aravinda. I'm into uh, BPO industry. Right. Send, yeah. Tilina Iranga, Aubrey. I know Aubrey. Property development and uh, real estate. This is Shane. Hi, Shane. Hi, my name is Nishanta. I am from uh, BPO accounting and finance uh, industry. Excellent. Um, Audrey? Hi, Mahesh. Yeah, I'm in finance. Very good. Um, interesting to see. All right, let's get cracking on the uh, presentation itself. I'm going to start here. Can everyone see the screen? Yes. Yeah. yes. Super. All right. Um, I'd invite you to, um, in, I, I will stop periodically to go through uh, any questions and answers. Um, so until that point, if you could kind of just make sure no ice cream vans uh, noises are heard outside, that'd be great. Uh, thank you. So we'll start with a quick look at what the global perspective really is. What are the options for assisting growth or revival or survival of industries? And um, in particular SMEs, we're looking at um, debt moratoriums, which we'll discuss today. There's furlough pay, which is encouraging employers to keep people on the payroll, even though they're not uh, going to work. And the state is funding that. There's, uh, there are unemployment schemes, uh, which is the alternative to keeping, keeping them on the payroll. Uh, there are small business grants, small business funding lines, collateral free lending, which is a key factor to consider when looking at debt in the local market. Um, and obviously the state also does uh, things like relief uh, on taxes by deferring what you have to pay them or by giving you rebates on um, what you may have paid. Um, and this is a little research done. There's a link there. Once this session is over, I'll share a PDF so you can have a look at uh, some of the resources that we've used. The primary purpose of going through the discussion today is going to be uh, this circular, circular number five. A few updates have gone to the banks, which are operating instructions for the banks. And um, based on that, the, I'll give you updates as we go along and the deviation from exactly the circular says. So first question is who's involved? The commercial banks, the licensed special banks, uh, finance companies and obviously the specialized leasing companies. I put in a few examples so you understand what sort of banks we're talking about. Essentially every registered, large registered, uh, large or medium sized registered lender is on there. Uh, you can have a full look, you can have a look at the full list uh, at the link below. Um, this 50 billion facility is primarily for the subsidy, for interest subsidy to the banks and leasing companies, right? So larger companies in tourism and um, these sectors listed on the screen, primarily apparel, IT, 
uh, tea, spices, and plantations, who and and logistic suppliers to those industries are eligible for relief, um, and regardless of how big or small they are. Um, whereas certain extended sectors, manufacturing, services, agriculture, construction, um, value addition, so. Yeah, um, trading businesses, authorized pharmacies. As long as they're small players, they're eligible. Um, small players meaning one billion, and they've extended. Central bank was saying that they've kind of broadened the definition of SME in order to uh, accommodate slightly larger players who may need the assistance, and the. Circular actually refers to only SMEs and not the micro sector, but uh, the operation guidelines have included the micro businesses. So that's good for all, well, whichever startups have been able to secure any debt. Um, right. And then they're also trying to look after the self employed businesses. So uh, your Uber riders, drivers, pick feed riders, drivers. Um, and the tourism sector drivers who have leases on their vans and they operate a, a guiding service, um, all of them are included as well. The A few people who are abroad and are eligible for debt locally, I think the banks were asked to give them five-year tenor loans. Uh, they're also eligible. Uh, but in order to qualify for this relief, key thing you must remember is that you must have lost a job or income, right? Um, any, any questions here? So when you say loss of income, do you mean complete loss of income or partially? Part, so partial loss of income is uh, certainly considered. Um, the you you don't have to have gone bankrupt because this is this the purpose of the whole facility is to keep as many businesses as possible afloat um, and that's what we'll get to in a second um, how the how the the in, the operating guidelines have been given to banks to not to support more the small man and less the larger company. Um, anybody else? Mahesh? Right. Uh, yeah, Mahesh? sure. Hi, sir. Yeah, now I assume now the, uh, assume uh, we are not going to do it, but any chance if you want to go for, a, you know, employee reduction, some, you know, senior level, um, now if they lose a job, but uh, we know sometimes they also do a a part-time Uber and things like that. They also have a vehicle and a lease. So those people, can they get benefit uh, out of this? So in theory, um, it is possible because all they need to do is justify to the bank that they have a second income and uh, the bank may already know about this second income when they gave them the additional facility. Uh, but it's at the discretion of the bank especially since it is likely that their salary goes to that uh, same bank as well. The, from a company perspective, Irshad, the question you brought up in terms of uh, letting people go mm -hmm. is very interesting because uh, in order to facilitate, in order to apply for the 25 million or two month working capital facility, whichever is higher, so you can forget about the 25 million, mm -hmm. um, you have to give a statement that there will be no layoffs, right? So the uh, it, it kind of it kind of differs it kind of defeats the purpose um, of providing this support. But you have to give an uh, a, a written confirmation from the borrower that the borrower has not approached well for one other banks, uh, but also saying that. The borrower does not um, 
we undertakes not to re retrench any staff um even under probation so technical probation they're not permanent um so i i'm not entirely sure i i would suggest you can uh well i'd assume not i'd assume not because at this sort of time it's a little difficult Mm -hmm. Mahesh, just a quick one there. Um, just want to find out this. Uh, so now, if since this is given as a two-month working capital, um, and uh, from the way things are, I don't think anything will recover for the two months. So does yeah. it mean that you can, uh, after the two months, you can look at uh, restructuring or uh, retrenching, or uh, um, how does is, is it like have they given a period that you can't fire for like a certain period? How does it work? You know? Right. So I'll I'll read the wording of this operational instruction by from the central bank. Yeah. Um, PFIs, so participating financial in, uh, institutions, should obtain a written assurance from the business using CBSL refinance facility that there will be no layoff of their employees and jobs will be secured with suitable re remuneration, including EPF and EPF. So I think the uh, the indication, if you read between the lines, is uh, don't lay off, but we're not saying much if you cut pay. But you have to pay the statutory dues. You can't defer EPF, ETF. Understood. So there's no time period given. Basically, if we take the loan, we can't fire, basically. You, uh, yeah. So um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a very interesting uh, observation because this loan is only for two years. Right, um, you get up to six months grace and 18 months to repay, which we'll get to shortly. But uh, you may not be able to, you have to give an undertaking say that you have to retrench. You could perhaps communicate later saying that you had no choice, but it will all depend on how the economic situation plays out, Joe. A little early to tell. Understood. Uh, uh, also, Mahesh. Uh... Just a comment. Maybe if you look at the wording, it says with with, with adequate remuneration or with suitable remuneration, right? So, so if somebody has consented the employee to uh, uh, take a pay cut, uh, yes. which most companies are doing, I think then that does not kind of impact uh, or has a bearing on this law. It doesn't. It, it doesn't say you can't reduce your pay. It, it, it only exactly says you that. can't. Exactly that. Yeah. Exactly that. So, uh, Chana. Uh, Thanks for joining us. Chandler's from uh, PwC. He's uh, head of advisory. Um, so absolutely right, Chandler. That they're, they're saying don't lay off people. They're saying well, they're they're silent about. Uh, well, they're not silent. They're saying suitable remuneration. Uh, statutory dues are compulsory, but everything else, well, yeah. <laughs> I think the important thing to thanks, Chandler. Thanks for that. Um, I think the important thing to look at here is the banking sector as a whole, right? The central bank's only giving an interest subsidy and the capital, the bank's capital, the depositor's money. I mean, this is what every bank has been saying. It's our depositor's capital um, is at risk. And it's not a new thing, right? If you, if you look at from 2018, from the beginning of 2018, the non-performing, can you see the mouse pointer? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So from the middle of, two from the beginning of 2018, you can see the non-performing ratios of the banking sector rise, right? So they've, they've not been doing too well. Um, and if you look at um, the types of banks that are, that have different non-performing loan ratios, the smaller banks are obviously higher because the higher risk clients and um, whatnot, but you're likely to see um, this 4.9 rise, right? And like you, like after the Easter attacks, you can see the sharp spike, right? Um, and that is likely to maybe continue because of uh, the current situation and. That is putting a lot of pressure on the banks themselves in terms of credit risk. So be wary that when you speak to the bank, it is at their discretion to extend these facilities to you. It is on a first come first serve basis for refinancing. 
Um, so apply fast, make sure that you maintain the, a good relationship with your bank. This is the sort of time that it'll really count. Um, yeah, so which facilities within the bank are applicable when you talk about term loans? These are the multiple types of term loans. And when you request from your bank to defer these term loans, and if they say, for example, that uh, a certain type of loan is not eligible, um, you should well, contact us. We'll, we'll, uh, you should look up the BOC instructions, which define all of these categories, right? And BOC is the largest lender in the country. Yes, they're state owned. So private banks have the option of interpreting it their, their own way, but essentially these are the types of term loans that you get. And then obviously leasing facilities from uh, banks and leasing companies, pawning, overdrafts, trade facilities. Um, but trade facilities, import facilities are all not uh, provided for under this, uh, under this, uh, system, um, except for pharmaceuticals, medical, food, fertilizer, and essential raw materials, machinery, and equipment. Um, and there's no restriction on whether it's currency or uh, whether it's U LKR, USD, GDP, or anything like that. Uh, but you just can't open facilities unless you're in these sectors. So if, for example, you're supplying this is Slascom, right? So if you're supplying um, software solutions, including a, some hardware, unless you find a way to justify that it's an essential equipment, you're going to have to find alternate ways of uh, running your business. Um, and that's one of the scary things today. If, if your business was dependent on a big markup on this product sale, you're going to have to realign yourself towards services very quickly. Um, so, right here we've we've got a a quick a, a little tree that shows you the types of applications possible. So we'll start with business, right? And the next few slides we'll look at okay, what are the existing facilities, term loans included? Permanent overdraft, temporary overdraft, and trade facilities. What are the restrictions? What can you get? Then we'll look at new facilities in terms of working capital loans, new investment loans, and how non-performing loans are being treated under this moratorium. It's very interesting, um, at least to me. <laughs> and uh, then there's the individuals, which we'll cover at the very end. So, um, Right, for all these facilities, if you get a moratorium for um, X number of months, your loan shall be extended by the same amount. You can choose not to extend it, uh, but the banks cannot deny you that extension. So, uh, yeah. Mahesh, is there a period um, that they can extend? A minimum and a maximum? Yes, so we'll be looking at that under each category, just in a just just in a couple of slides. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Mm. So here we go. For for term loans under businesses, um, we looked at the sectors eligible before, but for your uh, convenience, I put it here. You're eligible for a six-month moratorium, interest and capital um, on. These sec or for, for these sectors, regardless of how big your company is. If your group is, let's say your group is over a billion rupees, right? But you have three entities that bring in the revenue, then you fall under, you, you are also eligible under this sector. So, uh, and then each entity, each company within your group can apply to a different bank because the operating instructions that have come out are now saying, they're a little diluted because the fund avail funds available are only 50 billion rupees, which is the equivalent of $250 million. Um, and, you know, compared with the size of the banking industry, which is what, eight, 
8 trillion roughly, that's not going to take you too far. Um, but that is gross debt. You can't really look at it uh, one for one. All right. So um, back to the six month moratoriums. It was supposed, the circular says that each organization can apply for 25 million or two months working capital from each financial institution. But the central bank uh, regional development department, which is now running this whole scheme, has informed the banks that they can, that each borrower is only eligible to uh, borrow from one bank, right? Not from multiple banks. So you need to put your entire working capital requirement from one bank. Um, so you better pick your best bank or the bank which you have a little security with. Um, because like we said before, it is their capital. So they are going to insist on, they're going to insist on making sure that the loans that they give are as secured as possible. Um, Mahesh, just to uh, ask there. So yeah. um, say if you work, say you work with multiple banks mm -hmm. and since you're not sure from which bank you'll get, can you apply to two and then just get, uh, get the loan from one or can you only apply for one um so one bor I'll, I'll read the term to you first and then i'll i'll uh, inter i'll give you my interpretation of sure. it. um one borrower or business is eligible for only one loan even when the borrower has banking facilities in several banks hence participating financial institutions are required to obtain a written confirmation from the borrower that the borrower has not approached other banks for loans under the same scheme, right? So, um, yeah, yeah, then yeah, yeah. I would honestly recommend that you go shopping verbally, right? Uh, speak to the branch managers that you have relationships with, but before you put anything in writing in terms of request, you don't have much time. Uh, but before you put it in writing, make sure that this is the case because. Uh, I can't remember exactly which which paragraph it was, but there was talk. There was um, central bank is monitoring all of this, right? So if they catch you doing it twice, uh, you are unlikely to get anything. So the reason I think they're doing this is to try and broad base uh, the lending as far as possible, so that as many people uh, benefit. Um, yeah, and they've also been instructed to particularly be careful about, I'll just go to the, hold on, let, let's go to the working capital loan thing shortly. This is the term loan. There's a little bit in between, right? If you have permanent overdrafts, um, they will be extended automatically um, until 30th of September. And the rate applicable even for TODs, which are extended only for two months, though, is 13%. Um, yeah, so um, this this is how the over, overdrafts will work, permanent and, other, and temporary. So that covered the term loans, permanent ODs, TODs, and trade. We'll now look at the new facilities. So Joe your, and, and Joe and everyone else who wants the 4% loan, um, that's what we're about to get into. So eligibility we discussed before, um, two months is the amount of working capital that you can apply for. The circular itself, central bank circular did say two months working capital, but uh, the updates that have gone to banks have told them, please exclude anything that is non-essential, which is basically everything other than utilities, salaries, and other overheads like maintenance contracts and things that are critical to your business will not be allowed. So purchase of inventory, whether it's import or anyway, you're unlikely to be able to import it unless it's essential. Mm. Yeah. And... Uh, 
even if it's a local purchase, it's not going to be allowed under this working capital. This is just to whether the two months, month, or possibly two months that we may have to work from home. Um, and yeah, the banks have been asked to critically evaluate uh, the actual requirement. So the more evidence you take to support your case, the more likely you are to get your working capital loan. Um, I can't stress that enough. Take the evidence possible. If it is your bank statements or other bank statements, and you can establish a pattern, show invoices for it, attach those documents to your applications. It will make the difference between getting that or not. Um, and the circulars do say, uh, one moment, let me just uh, get, just a moment, I'll, I'll read one more thing from a circular. The participate, this is from instruction from Central Bank. So please note that whatever the bank says, the Central Bank is categorical about this. P participating financial institutions shall not in any circumstance grant loans at a rate higher than 4% per annum, right? So they can't say 4% is the prime lender, your subprime, and therefore your rate is eight. Um, it's, it's, that's not there, but they will uh, take your security. I mean, they're risking shareholders money. You don't want the banking sector to collapse as well. Um, yes, they've had a, great run with fantastic profits for decade at least but um, it's still their business not yours and they will want to satisfy themselves as to the fact that you can repay your loans um, these working capital loans can be taken for two years with a six month grace period maximum they can offer you less as grace period um, that is up to that is that is their decision um, but you have only two years to pay this. So I'm not sure how many people are going to look at investments, um, but for those who want to change the nature of their business, let's say retailers want to buy fleets of trucks um, or, uh, you know, because we're no longer going to, I mean, retail is going to be one of those sectors that's hardest hit. Um, you're going to, yeah, so there, there's 300 million per borrower available um, at a low rate. The low rate meaning the maximum they can charge you as a premium for your risk is 1.5%. Um, and AWPR was 9.31 uh, on the 17th which means, yeah, your, your borrowing cost is pretty low. It's a uh, little above, what, it's 10.8, so a little above single digits, which is not bad considering the rates we've been used to over the last couple of years. Um, and then, right, before we get into the penal interest, because that I think uh, is uh, fun on its own, any questions up to now? Hello. We are good, man. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So when it comes to non-performing loans, so all of the stuff that we discussed so far, um, so the new investment is only for performing borrowers. Non-performing borrowers are not eligible to in, uh, create new, to, to borrow, to invest again. But for delinquent borrowers, this is a great opportunity for them to come into the green again. Um, in the simplest possible terms, I'll explain it. If you've uh, 
obtained, let, let's, let's assume you have borrowed uh, 100 million rupees and you've repaid 51 million of that 100 million of the capital. Um, of the capital, not the total amount paid. So because you have repaid more than 50%, all the penal interest up to that date is waived off. So <laughs> to some borrowers, that's fantastic. Um, so you forget the penal interest, and then on the accumulated and unpaid interest on the rest of the loan, right? They haven't specified the rate at which you calculate, so that, that is up to you. But let's, the balance interest, uh, sorry, the balance total payment that you're, that you're supposed to make, 50% of that interest component is deferred, right? And you're only paying 50% of the balance interest, but you have to pay it in three years. If you pay it regularly and don't miss a single payment over those three years, that deferred 50% interest is written off, right? So not on, this is like a double win for you if you pay it off. Um, not only do you get 50% of your future interest waived off completely, all the penal interest for the prior periods are written off. So for big borrowers who are delinquent or, uh, I, well, in some form delinquent, this is a great opportunity to get back into the green because six months after you've paid uh, regularly, the bank is permitted to categorize you if they wish as a performing borrower, which means you're, you can take more facilities and everyone understands the value of a good crib report. Um, and if you haven't paid the other situation, if you haven't paid half of it, the Penal, is, penal interest is still waived off, but 25% of the future interest is only deferred. So you don't get you don't get half of the future interest, you get 25%, which is still not bad. Um, but um, yeah, and all recovery actions. So in the event, even if something has gone to courts and the banks have passed resolutions to auction something, they've been asked to hold uh, until the end of September which gives everybody a little breathing space to try and recover. I think we're all going to need it. Um, yeah. Any questions on this? Chaminda, I'm very happy. Yes. I have a question on the Facebook Live saying that uh, if, if, if one is a start apparel startup, are they eligible uh, for any of these loans? So again, with startups, um, I'm going to assume that you all are um, performing category uh, because it's a startup. You haven't had time to default on loans. Um, the working capital loans. Sorry, there's a notification. Okay, right. So. Um, Right, so working capital loans are typically given, as you can see here very clearly, they have the right to ask for security. So unless you have security to offer, um, it's difficult. And there was a webinar that I watched where um, the, the gentleman from DFCC, Mr. Tiagaraja, and a few other senior bankers, Shashi Jazim from Sampath, we're all there um, at, at various webinars. And what they've said is, look, you don't have time. From today, uh, you have seven days till the 30th. That is the application deadline. So for you to gather the right, gather the information, put a proposal together, submit it to the bank by the 30th is already a challenge. You're better off going to the bank that you have a good relationship with um, in order to use that relationship and the trust that you've built and whatever security that you already have at the bank, right? So um, Joe, when you spoke of working capital loans earlier, one of the key things to remember and the reason that we brought up this non-performing loan ratios of the banks is security. Um, the, the, the biggest 
issue here is that um, if you already have a property that is mortgaged uh, for your term loan or for your overdraft, right? Let's say you, when you took the lo uh, term loan, your property was, you took a mortgage on a larger property for let's say 12 million rupees. You brought down your exposure on that 12 million facility to seven, right? And then when you go to the bank and say, look here, I want two months working capital of 5 million. You have that leeway already on the mortgage that you, on the other facility to give me this facility, right? Because let's be honest, the banks are also not, they're not as uh, villain, villainous as um, the, as, as some like to portray. Um, they're not going to ask you to execute a new mortgage at this time. It is an impossible task, right? You, how do you meet your lawyer? How do you get the documents done? How do you register it? And I don't know if the bank's legal departments are working. So that's where relationship comes in. You can give undertakings, you can give affidavits saying that you will fulfill these conditions. Um, and that is where the good relationship with your bank really comes into play. And the obviously availability of security. Um, so go with, Joe, when it comes to your decision, let's say you're banking with four banks, go with the one that has the asset, right? If, if they already have some hold on the asset, they're gonna be a lot more comfortable giving you that loan. Um, so unfortunately to answer the question for startups, typically startups rely on alternate funding. This is for those who have established, who have staff members, who need to survive uh, through this difficult period. And I think you may still have to resort to traditional startup equity, st sorry, traditional startup funding methods like equity crowdfunding. Um, well, yeah, and, and maybe debt from your shareholders. Uh, usually a lot of, I think the Slascom report for 2019 said, uh, something on the lines of 55% of uh, startups are self-funded. Um, correct me if I'm wrong there, Chaminda, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure that's what it says. Right, so, um, yeah. Any questions on the non-performing or anything that we've discussed so far? Uh, Mahesh, Ashik here. Hi, Ashik. Hi. Uh, quick one on the moratorium. Uh, US dollar deposits, borrowing against US dollar deposits. Yeah. Uh, our bank says that their position is that they are paying interest on those deposits. Uh, therefore, they are not able to extend the moratorium on that. What's the take on that? So it is a cashback facility. Um, whether it is dollar or rupee is technically irrelevant um, because it, all they're asking for is security. It's not uh, an adequacy of security. So the valuation and not the interest really is the issue there. Um, one, I think you should probably put into your bank uh, an application in writing on the terms of the moratorium, on the terms of the CBSL uh, circular number five, right? Because as long as you don't apply incorrectly, they don't have grounds to accept inadequate security and you have the security in dollars. They don't have the uh, grounds to really refuse you so that in the event they are unfair by you, you can take your request with your adequate security uh, to the, to the regional development department of the central bank, which is monitoring this, I believe, on a weekly basis. So one thing I, I can, my experience with central bank has been that their service levels are fantastic and uh, they're, they're very proactive in terms of uh, supervision of banks and making sure that everybody is treated fairly. You may have to, um, you may can, you you may be able to write to the bank 
to the central bank uh, complete uh, about the unfair terms that they're that they're stating. Uh, the bank has 45 days to come back to you, right? Put your application in according to the rules and then take it up formally because what they're doing, in my opinion, is extremely unfair. Um, would some would someone else in finance like to share their opinion on what um, maybe Channa or Aubrey? I, I agree with your suggestion, uh, Mahesh, is that I think... Uh, it doesn't seem to be in uh, in line with the spirit of the uh, relief package they're giving because the bank has a security uh, and and therefore uh, uh, they technically can't say you're earning uh, uh, interest and therefore it's not eligible for that uh, interest rate cap. Uh, I didn't see anything specific in the circular which says uh, the application of that for a security which is interest bearing. So I think... Uh, Applying uh, as per the central bank guidelines to the bank, uh, and then pushing on those uh, in line with the guideline, I think is advice. It's a good advice. Yeah. Um, Ashik, just one additional thing. It might be useful to um, look deep into your network to see if you have friendly faces in your bank. Right. Um, today, <laughs> you you can't stress the. The importance of, of maintaining those relationships. Anyone else? Mahesh, I have a, another question. If uh, yes, please. See, I, see this twenty-five million limit, uh, saying that you can apply only to a, your one bank, right? Yes. You mentioned uh, so. Uh, so the 25 million limit uh, is, for example, say if I have, uh, it, 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 that's only for the working capital loan, right? So the deferment uh, part, so if I had a, a loan for uh, 50 million or whatever, I mean, I'm on a deferment as for the uh, earlier category, which is not the new working capital category, that there's no limit of, uh, applicable or am I wrong? You're absolutely right, Chana. Um, they, the, the term loan deferment, the OD deferment, um, so all your existing facilities, right? So I, I take you back to this diagram, all the existing facilities, which are covered here, uh, there's no number or limit there. Because like you mentioned, spirit of the purpose and the spirit of this uh, relief package, they're actually calling it uh, the Saubhagya COVID-19 Renaissance facility, right? So Renaissance rebirth, um, yeah, essentially, they're trying to keep you alive. They're trying to give you a, uh, a lifeline. So number of facilities here, no problem at all. It's only when it comes to new facilities that um, when it comes to new facilities, Dr. Banks are being a little strict on how many people take it because I get the feeling a lot of corporates have um, applied to maximize their low cost borrowing. Um, which, I mean, is as a business, there's nothing wrong with doing it, but central banks just put in measures to make sure there's no arbitrage. Yeah, so uh, Mahesh, so if I have uh, one entity only, say I'm a software services company and I have only one entity that I operate with, then my maximum, whatever I do, even if my working capital limit uh, requirement is 100 million, the maximum I can apply is 25 million. The Sorry, application of multiple your, banks, that option we had is not there anymore, right? Your, your, um, so the 25 million limit does not apply. The um, central bank has, so the wording on the circular is 25 million or two months working capital, whichever is higher. Due to the confusion that whole thing has caused, uh, they have dropped this whole, they, they've dropped the whole 25 million, um, uh, 25 million thing entirely. So, is that correct? Because my banks are saying there's a 25 million limit. So, um, okay, this is the operating instruction issued on the 20th of April. It's only three days old, um, which has clarified this to the banks. Not sure if it has gone from central bank to each branch manager. You can imagine their call volumes and workload uh, at the moment. It, 3C says, Applications from eligible 
uh, businesses and businesses whose working capital requirement is above 25 million should be considered on a case by case basis, depending on the importance of such business for employment and production in consultation with the regional development department of CBSL, right? So if you need more than 25, you apply faster and be more in touch with your bank, branch manager because he's gonna to have to keep going back and forth with central bank. Okay, okay. Um, so it is possible, in summary, it is possible, but it's a case by case approval um, and they can't say no. Thanks, uh, Mahesh. The other one is how is interest treated during this deferment period? Uh, because uh, different banks are giving different formulas on this. So, uh, for example, if, if I say, look, uh, I have an existing loan uh, uh, and I want a deferment which is offered under this, and there is obviously during the deferment, there's interest that accrues. Correct. Right? So, how is that treated? Uh, uh, so, in interest time? is. So now the rate they charge during this moratorium period, I don't think they will change it. There isn't a, uh, there isn't anything to say that they can't charge a, high, charge a higher rate for the moratorium because of the lack of cash flow. But uh, it's un, it is unlikely they'll go that far. I think the basic thing is that they will charge you interest over this over this period, add it to the capital value when you start repayment. Um, which is up to a period of six months uh, from the 1st of October, possibly. Um, they will give you, uh, they, they'll add that to your capital, but they'll also extend the period of your loan by that same amount. So your monthly installment doesn't go up too much. We've actually done um, a little Excel sheet uh, which models this, um, completely, there are two scenarios. Actually, maybe I can show you this. Um, just a moment, I'll take you to the... All right, hi, um, this, is just the, this is just the Excel sheet. Um, I'll, I'll try and share this uh, in a couple of hours. What it says is, I mean, essentially there are two models. One is if you've paid the first, if, if the first installment included interest uh, or if the first installment was a zero. So on both we've, we've calculated what the impact would be for the, um, for the interest period. Sorry, what the, what the interest accumulated over the moratorium period would be. And, how much your new payment uh, going forward would be. So we can, we'll, we'll share that. Um. So, so, so in summary, Mahesh, uh, the interest is accrued for that deferment period, and then they will have to give me a repayment period over the period of my loan settlement. Is that what it is? The interest is accrued over that period. They'll add it to your capital balance once your loan is, uh, when, once to, when you start repaying. Okay. Extend, they will extend also the period of your loan by the amount that they gave you the moratorium, okay. right? So your monthly installment will go up by the interest amount accumulated, but not by very much because they're extending the tenor of the loan. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. I, uh, yeah. The details. Yeah. So uh, can we quickly touch on employees because I think we are a little short on time. Um, the, before we go into employees, I'd just like to um, let you know, look, this is how our country is structured, right? We have 25% uh, of the population in agriculture, 46 in services and 29 in industry. This is the key sector that the government's trying to grow. So, um, we're, and they're trying to keep these guys alive. Um, when you look at this, the number of people who are self-employed in non-agricultural activities, so that's the number of people. So again, self-employed people are eligible for moratorium applications, so are employees. So you're looking at one and a half million people across the country who are uh, self-employed, right? Then you have 
another 188,000 who are employers and 4 million who are also eligible for the smaller relief. This relief is running out very fast. It's uh, uh, only 50 billion rupees. Um, so first, a few key questions. Is a, required, is a letter required? Yes, absolutely required. Um, a request is required. Best to keep it in writing for evidence, right? Um, deadline is 30th of April. You have to send it to the branch manager of the bank or leasing company. Some companies have set up dedicated email addresses. I think uh, the a lot of them have downloadable forms. I'm not entirely sure if everybody can access those forms because they may not have access to a printer, a scanner, um, and all of that. But you can write a letter yourself to the bank. Um, and the important thing is to get in the uh, letter under the right criteria, uh, uh, rather under the right eligibility category. Uh, and we'll go through that now, right? So one of the categories that is given is leasing for self-employed vehicle operators. This is the um, Uber rider, Uber Eats rider and the Uber driver. Um, also pick me. I don't mean to uh, leave anybody out and you go and all the other players, startups, please bear with me. I don't know all your names, um, but yes. So essentially, you get uh, you get six months on your lease payment. Please note that on leases, chances are they'll give you a new lease agreement, which means that you have new charges and evaluation again. Um, but let's face facts: charges and costs are one thing. Uh, keeping your vehicle is another. So that is your choice. Um, sending an application in for requesting this moratorium, there's no harm, you can always turn it down, right? If the terms are too bad for you and you don't feel like you need it, you can just say no, but send the letter in, right? Because this is the competition you're up against. 4.4 million motorbikes, 1.16 million three-wheelers. This is as of 2018. The three-wheeler number hasn't changed much. Um, and passenger cars, only another 837,000, but I believe that has gone up because the Tax rates were pretty low and a lot of cars came in. Mm. Yeah. Next category of uh, loans for individuals are all loans and leases under 1 million rupees. So all those motorbikes, all those three wheelers uh, will fall under this category. And because it's so openly worded, even public sector employees who may or may not uh, face a decline or decrease in income. I mean, their non-executive staff are going to face a decline anyway, uh, but their execs, I'm not entirely sure how their pay structures work, but private sector, self-employed, anybody with a loan, even retirees, pensioners uh, are eligible for this. If you are a self-employed business owner, uh, and you fall under those affected industries um, that we discussed before, you are eligible for six months loan or lease moratorium on all facilities, right? In order to be safe, we, I would personally recommend that you send one letter for each facility. Yes, it increases the volume of work for the bank, um, but, by sending one letter for each request, you keep them separate, you're likely to get more than uh, less. Private sector non-executive staff um, get two months on all personal loans, not on leases, but on personal loans. Chances are private sector non-executive staff would have borrowed amounts under this 1 million and would uh, those loans would get caught under there. Their personal loans, two months relief. Um, so in just a quick summary of what we covered, we looked at businesses in terms of what relief they get for term loans, permanent overdrafts, temporary overdrafts, what trade facilities are um, applicable. We then looked at new facilities in terms of working capital loans. Uh, 
any amount is fine. You can only apply from one bank. Try and go to the bank that has security, that has a relation, that you have a relationship with or that you have security with. Um, the loans will only be given at 4%, two years maximum, six months grace maximum. So they, they can give you maybe two months grace and uh, 22 months uh, repayment. That is up to them. Uh, giving this loan is discretionary. It is not mandatory. Your chances are improved by providing evidence um, and try and be considerate. Uh, if you don't need, don't take what you don't need because you still have to repay it. Uh, and if they're taking security, that is additional risk on whatever security you have. The You're depriving somebody of somebody else who may need it a lot more than you do. Uh, so please bear that in mind. Um, new investment loans up to 300 million rupees. Uh, only performing borrowers are eligible. Non-performing are not eligible. For working capital loans, even if you're non-performing, you can get it. So if you have adequate security, you may be able to go ahead. Uh, Non-performing loans, this is a bonanza for you. Huge benefit. Find a way to become performing because the benefit that you get is phenomenal. It's an automatic write-off of penal interest under any scenario. If you completed more than 50% of your capital payment, you get 50% of the future interest waived off, provided you paid properly over the next three years. If you haven't paid 50% of the capital value of the loan you obtained, you will get 25% uh, of the future interest waived on completion of payment. Plus, you get to move into, for both situ situations, uh, for non-performing borrowers, you get to get, at the discretion of the bank, you get to go back into performing loans, which means you can take more debt if you want to uh, or need to. But it gives you a chance to clean up your record. Um, yeah. Overall, I think this is a great opportunity for everybody here. Um, I'd like to just switch to... Uh, the last contact us slide so that you all can take down details and open it up to questions, please. And I can't really see Facebook um, questions, so I'd appreciate if people would share uh, verbally what is going on there. Oh, and sorry, I forgot a very important um, quick fact. Even the new loans, whether they're investment purpose loans or working capital loans, are eligible for a six month moratorium. So you can take the money today. You don't pay, um, well, you don't pay for up to six months. So that's that grace period. Uh, so you may get it today and you don't even have to pay the interest and capital on those loans for a while. That's amazing. Um, yeah, please questions. So Mahesh, uh... Uh, software services companies and uh, service industries who are not asset backed, right? Yeah. Uh, technically, uh, it's up to the bank to take that call where they take your cash flow and the order book as, uh, uh, as uh, what do you call uh, uh, security or not, or take that into consideration when they give the loan. No. So, yeah. Spot on, Chana. Spot on. Um, this is again where. Your relation, the here's the thing, right? Security is not as important as uh, as what you can convince the bank that your cash flow is going to be like, right? If you can somehow demonstrate that your cash flows are going to continue to be strong, that you have um, strong agreements with your clients, that they can't terminate your agreements in the short term, so they will continue regardless of their situation. Um, maybe seek legal opinion on your contracts uh, now. We, it, it's important, right? Because in dispute resolution of a contract, there are three phases. You get mediation, arbitration, and litigation. Um, if you can mediate, drag it on for a little while. Mediation is where the two parties... Uh, a third party comes in to help them make an agreement by themselves. There's no judgment by outsiders. 
it is the parties themselves. It's just a third independent party trying to help them through this uh, dispute. Then uh, arbitration is where you have either one or a panel of arbitrators who come in and look at your uh, dispute, decide there, they make decisions which are legally enforceable. Um, and the final one is litigation, which you just don't want to go down. Um, I mean, that's that's a long path. The, the key is convincing that, convincing um, your bank that your cash flows are strong, take the evidence like we spoke before, take your bank statements, take your contracts, your invoices, whatever you have, provide all the backup that the bank would need to know that you're genuine, that your request is legitimate and that you know your business is of a low risk. I mean, bad things happen to lots of people, so you can't help that. But until uh, and the bank will, they'll, they'll support you. They will support you. The CEOs have been going online and saying that they'll support you as well. So find those webinars, uh, look them up. They're, they're, they're here to support. Does that answer the question? Yeah, thanks. I think so. The question for our industry is primarily that uh, most of our customers are going through a tough times, right? So, uh, so I think the cash flow dip that we're experiencing is, is purely a temporary phenomenon. So as long as we can demonstrate that with strong contracts and the continuing orders, and that dipping cash flow is a temporary phenomenon, then uh, that will give the reassurance to the bank. That's what you're saying, right? Absolutely. Um, okay. <laughs> you articulated far better. <laughs> I have any questions from the participants or have we lost the call? Uh, Mahesh, uh, there is a request on Facebook whether will you be able to share the Excel workbook that you actually uh, showed? Certainly, certainly. Um, more than happy to share it. We have a lot of resources. Sorry, um, I'm not, I, I've tried very hard not to uh, mention, so I've tried to keep it very focused on the subject matter. Happy to share it. Um, can, so there's a special offer for SLASCOM members. If all SLASCOM members could speak, please speak to the executive director, Chaminda. She will give you the information on um, what the special offer for SLASCOM members are. Mahesh, can you give a brief of your company and how we can uh, help SLASCOM members? I think that's, I, I, don't have to, I don't think you have to be conscious of self-promoting. I think it's a service that we are looking to give our SLASCOM memberships. So you can mention how your company helps as a startup or as a service company in this whole role that you play. I sure. Let me give more clarity. Yeah. So um, I think everyone needs to understand the fact that my biggest investment is in tourism. Uh, the first ever backpacker hostel in the city of Colombo uh, was founded by me and my three closest friends. After the bombs last year, um, after the tragic event, we struggle getting the moratoriums that people, that the banks was supposed to give last time. Um, I mean, I was lucky to get mine. Um, I'm grateful that I got mine. The, in order to support people get their moratoriums because understanding the nitty gritty of bank circulars, getting access to all the operating guidelines um, and, 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 and information from the corporates who corporates who are you know friends family whatnot who share their real life experiences we put all that together into a website we call it lankaloan.com i mean simple enough um, there's a lot of resources there there's a blog there um, and a few videos um, that you can go in and watch it has a few videos in terms of how you can boost your cash flow where to look for a little hidden money um, the, later today, we'll be uploading a video on the, the difference between mediation, arbitration, and uh, litigation. Um, what we're trying, the, the key service here is providing information to those who look through the information and realize that it is easier for them to apply through the service uh, that Lanka Loan has. We are offering. Um, we, we basically are offering uh, 
to write that letter on your behalf using some very basic information. The supporting documents you still need to put together, but to keep the door open, you need to submit an application before the 30th of April. This letter will uh, be enough to keep the door open for you to start that discussion with the banks over the next 45 days. They have 45 days from the receipt of your application to give or not give you the facility. They're supposed to come back with an answer. So uh, there's a lot of information. Most of the information that I put on this slide was uh, taken from um, that site. And this is all we've been doing for the entire month. Um, yeah, and <clears throat> if you are a startup and you feel that uh, we can somehow help you, maybe link you with a customer, help you with an IP strategy, or help you with some agreement, then visit developsrilanka.com. Um, a few resources there, just reach out, email addresses, contact details, all of that. So Mahesh, there's a service fee for your service, obviously, right? That's a, uh, how yes, much is that? So for sorry. Business? 249 rupees. Um, so that's for a, that's for a corporate uh, or for a anyone, user. everything. We've dropped uh -huh. the rates just to make it accessible. Mm -hmm. Mahesh, do you all do mediation as well? We, I mean, a mediator is a person that both parties trust to come in and uh, handle it. So certainly there are, um, certainly we can do it. Um, and there are a lot of, lot of capable people, I'm sure if you, uh, think about who can do these services. Um, yeah, definitely possible. And um, the yeah, so you just just reach out. It's two hundred fifty rupees only per letter. Uh, so if you have three facilities, you may need three letters. Uh, sorry about that. We've made it as affordable as possible while still having to pay our own bills and salaries. Uh, excuse us on that, but um, yeah. Getting the message out and getting people oh, to apply before the deadline, I think is the most important thing. You can write the letter yourself. We have blog articles saying write it yourself, um, but get a letter in before the 30th of April. My one last oh. question, is that okay? Yes. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Mahesh on FB there is a question saying, what are the key points would you recommend to be highlighted in the letter? Sure. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. While I load the um, sample letter on the, on the computer, uh, let me just hold on. All right, since this is a discussion, maybe let's look at each other's faces. Um, you feel free to turn the cameras on if you like. The, so the question on Facebook was there. While I looked that up, Ashik, you had a question? Um, yeah, Mahesh. Uh, so essentially, I want to find out whether from, when, from which date is this two-month working capital applicable? So, um, okay. The so because you say you say that you put in the application by 30th of April, uh, banks have 45 days. So we are, let's say they take another 30 days. We are already at end of May. Uh, right. By which time, you know, you are already going in through the crisis. So in which, which of the two months working capital requirements are you supposed to be representing on your application? I mean, you're re really asking uh, the working capital requirement for, unless you have mega projects that 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 change the scale of your company um, drastically, um, I can't imagine your working capital requirement being all that different this uh, last month from and, and two months on because the costs that they're going to pay for are your salaries, your utilities, and maybe your rent, right? So they may look for a contribution from you. Right. So don't you have to uh, factor in your inflows in this two months or three months, whatever debtors that you have, money that you're going to receive? So you can. Done? You can. I think the bank will look favorably upon that uh, just because you're being honest about what your inflows are. Um, but so, at the same so, 
So Ashik, my response is that uh, I mean Mahesh is spot on, right? Unless other you are in a very seasonal business, uh, even that's the case. You can actually uh, kind of normalize your seasonality when you calculate your working capital. Uh, Mahesh is better there, better on this than I, I I am on it. So Mahesh, is that okay? If you're a seasonal business, you can uh, yeah, basically uh, normalize your seasonality in calculating your working capital. I mean, you could, you could, but I think. Um... For, for all intents and purposes, the stronger the case, the better off you are, right? So whether you want to take an average of the last few months, whether you want to project it, um, all depends on what you can substantiate, what, what evidence you have and how you can... Uh, yeah, so, so Ashik, to answer your question, uh, technically, I mean, we are helping a few companies as well. So technically there, uh, we, we looked at the, say, uh, why would you need this working capital loan, right? Not because government is giving 4%, but the fact that you have a drop in your cash flows, right? Uh, so technically, you have to take your uh, your fixed working capital requirement on a great basis, your rent, utilities, salaries, which is not going to shift, uh, and then whatever else that is key operating expenditure minus your reduced cash flow. So if you were earlier generating, say, 20 million a month, and you're going to now generate 5 million a month in the next uh, three to four months, I think then you have to deduct that uh, anticipated reduced cash flow and then present your working capital requirement. And um, Ashik, I'd be very careful, Ashik, um, projecting collections as I would normally project collections. Mm. Um, I think that is going to be the biggest challenge. And I mean, it's up to all the startup boys out there. If you can find a way to link collections, create some sort of... Uh, so I think it's a, it's a gut call, right? So I think most people take the doom, doom call, Mahesh. So I think some people are saying my cash flows will drop by 80%. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, some are saying 90 percent. Some are saying my customers are saying uh, they are unable to pay because they are, they are also equally impacted in their uh, respective markets. So I think if it is zero is your prediction, then I think it's good to go with zero. Uh, if you're uh, basically saying I can predict at 90 percent, uh, then uh, reduction. You So it's a gut call. Then nobody can have a crystal ball and predict that. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And it's a little bit about perception as well. If you go and tell your bank that, look, I'm not going to collect any money. They're just going to look at you as lazy, right? Uh, lazy and unrealistic, and perhaps even opportunistic, right? So managing that perception and uh, is also important. You might want to show some collection, Ashik. So you're right. Please do show some collection. Point um, right. So to answer the question from Facebook, Chaminda, um, I think it's important to the key thing to say is that you are eligible because you have lost income or you have lost your job, right? Um, you, it, it is a must to say that. It is, go through the site, see which, uh, what sort of benefit you're eligible for. You can look up, uh, you need to put in the right amount of eligible uh, relief just to maximize what you to, to get what you were supposed to get, not to maximize anything, but to get what you're supposed to get. Um, I mean, if you can go through the circular and identify uh, two key things, first being where is your eligibility mentioned, under which section, and the second part is what relief you're due for, again, under that eligible section, uh, you're golden, right? So those are the most important things. Obviously, don't forget the basics, your name, identity card number, company name, whatever facility uh, account it is, the date. Um, yeah, I mean, the account number and all of that is less important uh, than your ID number because they can they, they track you on that basis. Um, yeah, so those are my tips, Chaminda, for the Facebook question um, that we got. Thank you. I hope you heard that, uh, Harry, on Facebook, and you're okay with it. Is this Harry Padmanabhan? Uh, no, Harry Sudar, S-U-D-A-R. Okay. Um, sorry, Chaminda, I've run about uh, 15, 16 minutes over time. I'm happy to take questions for another 10, 15 minutes, if there are any. Are there any more questions out there? Um, hi, hi uh, Mahesh, uh, this is Aravind. 
Uh, Hi, I'm, uh, I'm currently at the stage where I actually uh, submitted the bank my initial request and they have requested me to you know um, provide them with the financial information. Okay. Uh, so I'm requested to uh, submit a six month cash flow. Um, but uh, as far as I am made to understand, um, so it's basically they're looking at two months uh, cash deficit. Like we have, I've already applied for 25 million loan. So okay. to be to be uh, to be eligible, ideally I should be submitting a deficit of cash, uh, roughly circa 25 million, or how we should be. So, um, my okay. real requirement is actually somewhere like that. To be frank, <laughs> okay, because, right. the rec- because the recoveries are much harder. Our eighty percent of our revenue is foreign, foreign in foreign currency. We are actually BPO industry, right? So the recoveries are much harder these days. Sure, sure. Um, okay, so what I'd suggest, see, the most important thing here, uh, Arvinda, is to show the bank maybe two scenarios. Right. Yep. One, which is your projection, and then in a worst case, can you service the loan? Right. Um, whether it is four percent or not, they still they the, they still want that because I'm assuming security is probably a little difficult for you all to provide, given that you're a services industry company, right? Uh, actually, uh, they've agreed to go ahead with the uh, uh, director's personal guarantee, which is uh, not an issue for the time being. Uh, so repayment is not an issue because uh, money is still uh, flowing in, uh, but uh, which is not meeting our requirement to pay off. Uh, much. That's where the issue is. Right. So what's the question again, Arvinda? So this, uh, so the twenty-five million, the cap. So that I'm asking the capital for. Uh, so do I have to uh, put like uh, in two months requirement, or because they have asked for six months uh, cash flow? Yeah, yeah. So here's the thing, right? Yeah. Your the, the, the two different things. You're borrowing two months uh, cash flow requirement. So yes. if your deficit is say 12, 13 million a month, yeah. then you can ask for the 25. Yes. But uh, six months cash flow is just to see how long, that's for the bank to understand your business a little better in terms of how you see the next six months in terms of, uh, in terms of how you see your cash flows. Right. The impact that it will make to you, Aravinda, is in the uh, grace period that they give you. Right. right. If your cash flow deficit lasts for maybe three months or four months, yeah. or, or like basically repayment is, you don't have enough free cash for repayment until three or four months passes, yes. Yes. Uh, that'll reflect in your cash flow. So yes, then you can course. ask for a longer grace period. Right. Mind you, asking for a longer grace period means that you have less time to pay the whole loan. Right. So awesome. you need to pay that, the pros and cons of that. Right, right. Okay, got it. Nice. Thanks. Thanks. Super. Thank you. Um, Shaminda, any interesting questions uh, on Facebook? Uh, no, that was the last question. Okay. Um, so uh, will, yeah, there's one on this. Will there be any decrease in interest rates for housing and personal loans? I've spoken to a lot of friends who are actually asking the banks for reductions in um, their rates. Um, that's a voluntary thing. That's a negotiation. Um, yes, base rates have fallen. Um, but at a time where they're taking a beating on the other side, and you've asked for a fixed in, fixed interest rate loan, uh, you're unlikely to give them any leeway uh, if the rates went up. So be a little. Uh, let's just, just let's just think. Um, apply and see, right? But uh, yeah, that's all it is. Okay, thank you, Mahesh. I think we've run over time. Any other one more question, or we can close. Anybody? Okay, thank you so much, Mahesh, for that, I think, quite informative uh, webinar. And there, I think there are a lot of questions out there. Thank you for your time. Yes, Mahesh. Uh,
Thanks, Mahesh, guys. you will uh, share the presentation? Um, yeah, please. Yeah. I will, um, yeah, I'll send you the presentation and a couple of links. Mm -hmm. If you can share that and we'll make it public on our website as well. Okay, um, wonderful. None of this is magic. <laughs> Thank lot you. More, lot more work that um, so for the slide on this call, we were doing a quick survey to see whether you needed assistance in um, uh, reaching out to the banks to get your working capital. There was yep. a poll that went out. If you have not, if you are interested in working together with Slascom, because we are trying to see if as an industry we can do something, uh, please reply to that email or drop me an e uh, the ED email. Uh, that would be great. Um, if you could go do it within the next couple of hours, it would be great. Thank you. I certainly shall. I'm very happy to help anybody who needs the help. Um, it's a lot of the information that you need on the individual level, you can find online uh, on, on the website. The, as an industry, I'd, I'd, I'd love to work with you. Um, so, yeah. I'll reply. Thank you, Mahesh. Thank you. Thank Chandra, you any Thank parting you. words, Chandra? Or that was, I covered everything. I think all done. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks, uh, Mahesh, for sharing your knowledge uh, generously. And thanks, Amita, for putting this together. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you all. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Chaminda, great show. Well organized, good crowd. Thank you, guys. Thanks. It was informative. Thanks. 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 Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.